and welcome to day six of the 24 day extravaganza of physics questions here and today we've got a particle physics one uh, we are talking about isotopes and annihilation so it is uh, about all sorts about particle physics but it's quite interesting because it's a different type a different flavor so this one's actually quite interesting because there's a uh, lots of things going on and lots of information this is more of a second year kind of question here so they kind of give lots of information. So I'm gonna, what I tend to do is I bring a highlighter with me and I tend to highlight any key numbers and things like that. So helium is the second most abundant element in the universe. The common isotope of helium is 4-2. Um, the nucleus of this has a rest energy. So this is this clearly must be an important thing. They put in a random number like this. In 2011, the relativ relativistic heavy high-end collider anti-helium nuclei were produced. Nuclei of anti-helium are made of antiprotons and protons. It is suggested that an anti-neutron can decay to form an antiprotest in a process similar to beta decay. In one particular collision between an anti-helium nucleus and a helium nucleus, the nuclei were annihilated and two proton photons were formed. Okay, so the thing, first question is, is state what is meant by an isotope? So this is um, something that's really, um, it's just a factual thing you are saying. It's not a because, you're just saying an isotope of an element, of course, has the same number of protons because if it didn't, it wouldn't be the same element and uh, different amounts of neutrons. Okay, so it's a two mark question, which is quite interesting. So having a look at the mark scheme, Atoms have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. So that's what they're looking for you to understand, that you understand that the new protons are the same, but the neutrons are different. Okay, so a state thing is just a very factual thing you were saying. Sometimes with state is like increase, decrease, things like that. Um, in this case, it's just you are telling something that's factual that you need to know. And this, this the fact that an isotope, it's very simplistic. It's literally you have an element that has the same amount of protons, but different number of neutrons. OK, so explain why two photons are formed instead of a single photon when helium nucleus annihilates an anti-helium nucleus. So the two photons are formed because. Now, the reason they are formed is because you are trying to conserve momentum. It's one of the big things that you try to conserve momentum. OK, so you're trying to conserve momentum momentum okay by having two photons in both in ah, going in opposite directions linear momentum is conserved. Okay, so what happens, of course, you have a particle and an antiparticle there colliding, and then a photon and another photon in opposite directions. And that's all to do with conserving um, momentum. So you actually get one mark to explain why, because I'm trying to conserve momentum by having two photons going in opposite directions, linear momentum is conserved. So one mark for mentioning about conserving momentum. And the second mark is needing two photons traveling in different directions, actually mentioning that they're going in opposite directions to conserve that momentum. OK. Calculate the data from the passage, the maximum frequency of the photons produced in this annihilation. So looking at the data from the passage, I already highlighted the rest energy of helium. That's 3728 mega electron volts. So I know that a helium is 3728 MeV. An anti-helium is also 3728 MeV because a particle and its antiparticle have the same mass, therefore the same rest energy. So the total energy I have to start with is 2 times 3728, which is... Seven four five six, and of course, 
when you give him an MEV, I tend to then convert that into joules. So that's going to be um, times this 7, 4, 5, 6, times 10 to the 6, times by the charge of an electron. And I get the energy in joules. That's 1.19 times 10 to the minus 9 joules. So I now know the energy, the total energy at the start. This, if they had kinetic energy as well, I would need to add that as well. But in this case, we're just talking about um, helium and antihelium. Okay, they're not saying that there is any kinetic energy there. They've not taken that into consideration. So this is the total energy at the start. So that means at the end, my two photons must in total have this amount of energy. So two times uh, photons equals 1.19 times 10 to the minus 9 joules. So one photon here is going to be 5.96 times 10 to the minus 10 joules. And then you can use E equals HF, you know the energy. So I've got 5.96 times 10 to the minus 10 over H, which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. is 8.99 times 10 to the 23. Now, let me look at the mark scheme here. Here we go. Anywhere between 8.9 and 9 times 10 to the 23. So three marks available, one, four marks available, sorry. One for working out the rest energy at the start. Okay, one for then working out the, it in joules. One for each photon and one for the answer. So you make sure when you do these, you do actually put the answer on the answer line so the examiner can see. Oh, my tablet's not happy. There we go. So 8.99 times 10 to the 23. Always put your answer on the answer line. So we've got here, I've got one mark for working out the total energy, one mark for converting it into joules one mark for using E equals HF, and one mark here for the answer of 8.99 times 10 to the 23 hertz. Okay, so complete this equation for the possible decay of an antineutrino. So I know it's a neutron, and a neutron is decaying into a proton, which normally means there's either an at least a beta or a beta plus emitted. And of course, on the flip side of that, there must be an electron neutrino emitted of some sort okay we're going to need to work out the flavors of this to actually work out here so i know that of course the neutral number of uh an electron of course is zero and what we have to do here is we have to work out and how to balance the formula so of course the proton number of an, an anti-neutron is also zero an anti-proton has a proton number of minus one so this must have a proton number of plus one so this here is actually a beta plus particle. So this is a positron. So this is an anti-lepton, which means that this here must be a lepton. Okay, so it must be the neutrino. So the way I looked at this and I went, okay, I know it's neutron decay. And at the top, they did say it is similar to beta decay. So I know that means there must be an electron or a positron emitted. And to conserve lepton number, there must be a neutrino emitted. But it's closer look at these numbers to work out if it was a positron or not. OK, so having a look at the mark scheme here, one mark for actually getting the E. OK, and one mark for getting the actual right positron, uh, not the positron, the neutrino. So we've got one mark for actually getting the beta plus and one mark for just getting an electron neutrino. What interaction? would be responsible for the decay in part D. Um, now, this is, so it's either EM, gravitational strong or weak, okay? It has hadrons and leptons. Therefore, it must be weak, okay? So hadrons and leptons always means a weak interaction. So there we go. That is day six of the 24-day extravaganza.